All right, it's Sunday evening, really. It's five o'clock. I've been working like crazy. No time to do anything. We got a couple boxes that come in the mail we need to open. The push rod didn't come in on a Wednesday like they promised me, so I think what I'm gonna do is pull that intake manifold off and the valley pan and make sure there's no push rod laying inside there and see the condition of the lifter in the short time that I have left. And uh, open those boxes and maybe something else. We did take the Firebird out late last night for date night. Date night! Yeah, date night. And she didn't fall asleep, so that was great. <laughs> All right, let's do something. All right, I finally wrestled that joker off. I wish that thing weighed 75 pounds. But here is why it always sounded like it had an exhaust leak, because it did. It was coming out right there. And it got in there from the heat crossovers. All right, as soon as I catch my breath, I'm gonna take the valley pan off. By the way, look at those ports. Big as a rectangle port, big block Chevy. Maybe I ought to get a cam for the thing. Hmm, somebody's been living there. Look at that, though. All right, we got the belly pan off, and here is exactly how it looks. Oh, yeah, there's the missing push rod. I don't think I'll be able to reuse that. And the lifter has squirted out. Which is kind of peculiar because it had like 25 pounds of oil pressure at idle. Hmm. Unless of course the oil pressure gauge is hooked in somewhere lower than that oil pressure port. Let's see what the lifter looks like. Pretty good. It's a giant thing. Hmm. Anyway, let me see what I see here. All right, I looked at the lobe in there. The lobe looks fine on the cam. Ain't sure why it been a push rod. Maybe there's some young fella driving it at some point with high RPM or something. Who knows? But anyway, the lifter looks okay. I put some assembly lube on it and put it back in there. I need to find a push rod and then I think we'll bolt her back together. And I bet five bucks it runs better. But I need to go in the garage. We got a few boxes in the mail. We need to open them up. And I pack up my tools and I need to go to sleep and get ready to... Go back to the old grind tomorrow. All right, we got some boxes to open that came in the mail. One's been here a weekish, and one's been here a couple of weeks ish. We already uh, got out the knives and opened them up to spare you all this fear of dangerous knife work. We just did it off camera, right? And that way everybody will feel better. All right, go ahead, pal. That's a nice knife. That's an old one. Does don't you have one like that? Similar? Similar to it, but you see. No, I mean dad. That's a Cub Scout knife, an old one. That's cool. Check that out. Oh my! Check it. I like it. And it's got a flashlight, and it looks like. Let's see. Oh, I heard on today's video that little man lost his pocket knife. Well, this one has been sitting on the shelf for several years and hoping I would be able to give to my grandson when the time was right. But seeing that my oldest son keeps giving 
me granddaughters and my other son doesn't seem to want to get married, still sowing his wild oats, so to speak. I figured it was time that his pocket knife found a new home. She's a bit old and dirty and might be dull, but it seems like the perfect project for the little man. Besides, at his age is where he would have an official Cub Scout pocket knife. The other item in the box is for the little miss. Don't want her to feel left out. Take care. God bless. Tom. Well, Aww. she'd be out here if she wasn't inside watching after her puppy. Besides, I think she's getting too pretty to be on videos. What do you think? Maybe so. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and open the other one, bud. Yeah, we'll let her know, and thanks a lot. Yeah. Perfect. Not that you're not pretty. <laughs> thanks. Oh, just like the leather man. That's right. Awesome. I'm going to knock the fire extinguisher down. That wasn't good. It didn't go off. That's so good. So that's just fine. That would have been interesting on video. More knives? That's a nice sharpener. That's what we need. We've been needing that. This package is from Troy Tree Guy. The first one was from Tom Noble. Let's see it, pal. Look at there, it's got your name right on it. That is That's cool. cool. Now how do you get that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that put a smile on his face. That's a little over the top, ain't it? Yeah. This says read me please. Well, I guess you better read it. Not too loud when I read. He says, hello, heavy Chevy family. You're just going to let me take over. When I heard about little mister losing his knife, it struck a chord with me. Years ago, when I was about his age, I got a soccer ball for my birthday. I was never into sports as much as a kid, so my mom and I returned the ball. The only thing I could find in the store was a Swiss Army knife. I chose the Tinker model because I was always trying to fix something or take something apart. So I ordered one up for the little guy. It came without the engraving I wanted it to have. I took a rain day and drove to Freeport about one and a half hours to have it engraved. Well, thanks for your troubles. And now... Getting it... Oh. Freeport. Was it a big word or something? No. Look at it. What's it say? Where you at? I drove to Freeport about one and a half. Finally, get, have it engraved, and now finally getting it in the mail. Finally. That's a big word. Finally. Well, I wasn't sure what that first letter was. Getting it in the mail. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed mine. Twenty-five years later, I still have mine. Blades worn and the Phillips tip all boogered up from lots of use. Remember, a knife is no replacement for a leather man. And a leather man is no replacement for a knife. That's exactly right. I have both and find that together they complement each other. Thank you for all you share with your viewers. I appreciate the family time and all the knowledge, fun, ingenuity, and experiences you have. Be safe together and always well. Yours truly. Rob Hogg. P.S. The sheath is one I made from a kit 15 years ago in Scouts. Man, that's neat. Let's check that out. Wow, Handmade, bud. Handmade. Boy Scouts of America. 15 years ago. Ain't that neat? And look, you can put it on your belt. Except I don't wear a belt. Well, that's okay. Maybe you ought to hook it on your necklace. <laughs> That'll look interesting. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's very thoughtful. Thanks, y'all. Very appreciative. And thanks to all these guys, too. The first one came from this guy, Tom Noble, the Busted wow. Knuckle Garage. 
That's special. Right it is there. pretty special. They all are. I saw a heavy shaman here. I was like, oh, that's for you. I was totally not expecting that. I did not see little. Well, tell them thanks. Thanks. That's the special kind of stuff when you're not expecting it. That's right. Thanks, y'all. Thank it's you. A lot of fun doing this YouTube thing. Yes, sir. We'll do as long as we can. And this is just for Chevaholic. Isn't that lovely?